Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Last week, we talked to Melissa and David Campbell of Homestretch about their passive house multifamily project in North Glenora in Edmonton. They replaced two homes with 16 townhome style homes, slaying urban sprawl, reducing emissions, and creating desperately needed new affordable and diverse housing in the city. This week, we're going to look at just how green this amazing project is. It started with just the desire to do something better, but I wasn't sure what that better looked like. And the more I researched, the more I came to like the Passivo standard. Um, and I think what I like about it is it's very clear cut. You have to follow, you know, you have to follow the guidelines. You have to meet certain targets and, and then you get the certification. Passive House is a rigorous energy efficiency standard. These homes require only 10% of the energy of a code-built home to heat. Yeah, so Passive House is uh, kind of the gold standard of energy efficient construction. Um, the building is super insulated, so you know, 14 inch, R, R40 walls, um, R60 in the roof, um, 9 inches under slab insulation, really good windows and doors. Um, and this, it's a super airtight building too, so it has you know, less than half an air change per hour. The upper walls are super insulated with 14 inches of foam insulation with embedded structural steel. The walls for the upper um, above grade piece are the SI wall systems, which is 14 inches of EPS foam and light gauge steel. Um, and the basement is ICF with an extra five inches of EPS on the outside. So two and three quarter inches of foam on the inside, eight inches of concrete, and then another seven and three quarter inches of EPS. So the heating and cooling system is all air source heat pumps. And uh, most of the electricity for, for the heating and cooling and the building usage from the solar PV system on the roof. Campbell says the heat pumps function perfectly, right down to minus 40 degrees Celsius, and no gas or gas bill is required for these homes. So is it net zero? Well, it's not quite net zero just because it's so dense and so many people live here. So we have 10 units hooked up to the solar on the roof and those 10 units are net zero. And then the other six units are kind of the smaller units. They're really energy efficient, but they're using, you know, grid source power. The townhouse complex is accented by a sunken central courtyard, complete with an accessibility lift. The complex is also EV ready. So we installed two car chargers uh, right now, um, but we made it uh, kind of future proof so that we could install electric car chargers at, in all the parking stalls. So right now where there's just regular plug-ins, there's actually a conduit underground um, that ties back to a big junction box so that we can actually add a car charger to any one of these parking stalls. T5M Connect got some funding from the Smart Sustainable Resilient Infrastructure Association for some of the cutting edge features. So was it worth it? And if you just want to make it your one profit, it's probably not the best way to spend your time and effort. But if you care about your city and the climate and you think a long term and you know that, you know, utility costs are going up, carbon pricing is going up, people are caring more and more about environmental sustainability, then it starts to make a lot of sense. So what we want to do is take, you know, everything that we learned about, you know, probably simplifying the building envelope and using you know, as simple processes as, as possible and put all that effort and time into the actual building construction. What David Campbell learned is the Passive House certification process was challenging. He now wants to take what he's learned, simplify the building process, and set net zero as the primary goal instead. The project was fully leased before it was completed. Learn more in our blog at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.